And now to rate the white and yellow cards of False Gods and the new tournament promos. Like last time, let's just get the vanillas out of the way. I'm rating all of the vanillas one star with two exceptions. Carrie Barra, I'll give three stars for being a maybe include in the white aggro deck. It's the same exact stats as Satellite Falcon, but it's a machine beast, so it doesn't get protected by curiosity. Same goes for the Swan, three stars. White aggro already has two different one costs to play, so I'm not 100% sure if it wants a third instead of something like Carrie Barra. And now for the cards with actual words on them. Trickster Machine God Loki is a card that I wasn't very impressed by at first glance. Bouncing your own stuff to refresh a spirit that isn't exactly that powerful didn't impress me. And having to deal damage or be dealt damage to even get the chance to proc the ability made this card seem too situational to me. Then, I remembered another Mecha X-Rare, Dermdyna. With Dermdyna's ability, you can make Loki unblockable. And since Dermdyna's effect lasts for the whole turn, provided you have enough things to bounce, you can just OTK your opponent. I'm giving it 4 stars. This card has the potential to be very scary. Alongside Loki, there are two other white cards that deal with tokens. Gunsmith Mime, I give 4 stars. I think this fits right into the Loki strategy by providing two mechas with one card. Thunder God Mech Donner is interesting because it combos with any kind of token not just the mecha tokens. That's part of the reason why there's a lot of talk about making a green-white deck that spawns ant tokens to be fodder for Donner to draw you cards. It's certainly a tantalizing idea, but I'm not convinced that the ant token deck has room for this card. And unfortunately, white doesn't have enough token generators to make this consistent. I'll give Donner three stars. I think the support for Donner isn't quite there yet to make it truly great. Grand Woden is a really cool anime card that got downgraded from negating magic cards to now just taxing magic cards. And unfortunately, that makes this card a lot worse. Two stars. I think this card is going to be purely relegated to the side deck at best. Merged Mech Lord Mammoth Aegis. I really like this card. The fact that it's a machine beast gives me more excuses to play Naman City alongside the other machine beasts of Fanatec Elk and Naman Guard. Unfortunately, I think that's going to be this card's biggest downfall in competitive play. People were already not likely to play multiple copies of the Nexus because it's such a brick in multiples, and I don't think this card is impactful enough to play over Enterprise. I'll give it three stars. I think it's a cool card that will allow for a full-on Machine Beast deck, but I don't think it's going to translate to consistent competitive success. While we're on the subject, Blazaster Eagle, two stars. At best, this is a tech card in the Machine Beast deck, but I don't think there's enough room in the Machine Beast deck to include it over cards like Pegasion. Lion Machine God Superbia, one star. Ironically, this card rewards you for playing multiple Naman Cities, but it's just not good enough. A card this expensive needs to do more than conditionally refresh itself. Ursus Polaris, one star. Just a pack filler uncommon. Polar Ice Dragon Glacius, one star. Another card that's too expensive for what it does. Jet Wyvern, one star. I don't think this is even good enough to play as a side deck card. Just play Pegasion instead. Sunk Shane, one star. It's a more expensive glass bear, a spirit that's already very niche. Not good enough. Ice Goddess Frig, one star. It's a neat tax card. I just don't think it's good enough to replace something like Rocket City. Frost Tree Dragon Silverheim, one star. Yet another expensive spirit that's not impactful enough. Shield Mobile, 
one star. I like the idea of this card, but again, Pegasion exists, so this isn't good enough. Farflung Land, Giant Beast Forest, and Tranquil Ice Cavern I'm bunching up because they're all one star cards. Farflung is a telegraph battle trick. Giant Beast Forest is only decent in a world where there's board wiping cards everywhere, and Ice Cavern is just another expensive nexus with bad niche effects. Very disappointed by these nexuses. Reboot Code. You ready for my hot take of this set? I think this card is overrated. In theory, this exists for you to make a huge swing turn and attack with a bunch of spirits. In this case, if your opponent kills one of your spirits, this flips up to refresh your spirits to attack again. Problem is, I don't know how you're getting to that situation, because your opponent is just going to block and kill the first attacking spirit. The only situation I can think of where this is useful is when you have Derm Dyna, but missing Loki, so you need something to refresh your guys. I'll give this three stars. In theory, this card sounds great, but the situations where it shines I think are too few and far between to really warrant playing this. Iceberg, 1 star. This card would only be playable if you could give armor to something at flash timing. As is, it's not impactful enough. Infinity Shield, 3 stars. It's not as ubiquitous as Suppression, which is the only thing that's holding this card back. Otherwise, it's a very solid magic card that's going to see experimentation, especially alongside the Axe Spider. Inescapable Avalanche, 4 stars. I think people are really underrating this card. I think white decks will find a way to jam this card in, because as we've seen with Dream Bomb, bouncing something to hand is powerful. I'm a huge fan of this card. Moving on to yellow, which is a color that I think got a lot of... Interesting stuff, I'll say. Guardian Clavis, however, is not one of those cards. One star. There are just too many things holding her back. If Yellow got an 8-cost magic card that was game-winningly strong, then I could see this being playable. Until then, it's a no from me. Fallen Angel Asadia, or Acadia, I don't know how you say this. I'm giving two stars, and that's only because it might see niche play alongside Avaritia as a revival target. Aside from that, this is another spirit that's too expensive for its own good. Mace Angel and Princess Hachikazuki, one star. These are just bad luster spirits. Okay. Now for the interesting stuff, the other landers. Arcana King Charles is a card I'm really torn on because the plays that can happen with this card are really nutty, but I'm also remembering that Prince Penton basically saw zero competitive success. To be clear, I do think this card is better than Prince Penton, but I'm also trying to set my expectations low because I was extremely wrong about Prince Penton. So with that in mind, I'm giving this two stars. I think the fact you're gambling on the Wind Summoned effect to work is enough to hold this card back. But I'm ready to be proven wrong. Arcana Princess Anne, one star. I don't think this card is good enough and is only played in a pure other lander deck for the funsies. And the same goes for Arcana Beast Queen, one star. I just don't think this card is good enough to see play in a competitive deck. Arcana Joker, 5 stars. This card is bonkers. The fact that this can combo with other Jokers for even more unblockable attacks makes it very scary. And if you're willing to invest a few more cores to get them to level 3, which you should, then they get out of Burning Force range. This also combos with Light Emperor Lumiere, 4 stars, for being able to make an unblockable spirit also gain you life. Joker scares me, and it wouldn't surprise me if this card pushes yellow into tier 1 status. I think it's that good. And while we're talking about other landers, the three cards is a one star. Perhaps I'm underestimating it because Bandai seems to think this card is good enough to give it the SPR treatment, but I'm not seeing it. Yellow wants their magic cards to be more impactful than this, and certainly not reliant on having three other landers to play. Alright, now for the harpies, which Bandai is calling bird folk because 
I guess it's more kid-friendly. Captain Raphael getting what is essentially a Burning Force-like effect while also recovering a card from your discard is nothing to scoff at. But you need four other spirits alongside Raphael, which even for yellow, isn't always an easy thing to do. That being said, I think it's good enough to be included in your standard yellow deck. Four stars. I think yellow will be even more inclined to play this alongside Alice and just nuke boards together. Scout Crondale, one star. There are three total bird folk spirits, which includes this one. And the Nexus negation is just whatever. Air Sniper Breeze. Four stars. This is a staple side deck card against purple. The effect might even be good enough to main deck a couple copies, especially if you're expecting to play against purple. Clockodile. Four stars. Yes, it does need the soul core, which makes drawing multiple awkward, and it doesn't have the stat line of Gale Yale that allows it to comfortably avoid burning force and the like. I still think you play it though. Blessed is such a good ability that I think you'll be willing to play more into removal. Toy Hero Musashi, one star. This is essentially an upgrade on Prince Penton, but that still doesn't make the card playable. Tin Soldiers, three stars. Yellow doesn't need to play zero cost spirits, but this is a better version of the Elemental Spark promo. Caladon, two stars. If Gale Yale can see play in Fable Beasts, then surely this will see play over it. Right? Ticking Floral Clock, one star. Effects aren't good enough to play over Cathedral and Phantasmal Paradise. Same goes for Flower Garden, one star. Yellow doesn't want a deterrent for destroying Nexuses. It wants a card that actually protects Nexuses. Harpy Nest Palace, two stars. I think this will see experimentation alongside Captain Raphael, especially if the deck goes the Alice route, but I still don't think it's good enough to replace the standard yellow nexuses. Somersault, two stars. It's a cute effect, but I think it's too expensive for what it does. Magic Mirror, sadly two stars. Because of how flash timing works, this card is never going to do what you want it to. I like the idea of it, and I do think people will try to make it work, but I don't think it's good enough. Lightning Arrow, three stars. This card is really cool. I could even see this splashed into non-yellow decks. The problem is I don't know if yellow has room for this alongside its other great magic cards like Exhaust Nexus and Angelic Pressure. I'm curious with how much use this will get. White and yellow are both getting some really cool cards that could change up their deck building significantly. As a white main, I'm very excited to try out Loki and Mammoth Aegis to see what they'll do. I'm also scared for what yellow is going to do after this set. I think Joker especially has the potential to bring yellow to tier 1 status. But as always, time will tell. If you found this video to be helpful, hit that like button and subscribe for more Battle Spirit Saga content. Until next time, laters.